Today's cardinal lesson, we're going to talk about the Roth IRA as opposed to the traditional IRA. So traditional IRAs or the IRA has been around since the early 70s. And in 1997, William Roth was the sponsor of the Roth tax bill or the Roth and it became the Roth IRA, which is a way to set up a tax free retirement account. Okay, now I've had some people that have commented about me using the word tax free, not necessarily in a positive way. And they're saying they didn't necessarily agree with me. And the part that's tax free about it or never taxed is the accumulated earnings. So earnings accumulate tax free. So it is funded, a Roth IRA is funded with after tax dollars. So, you know, like if we use an example of my 23 year old son, just starting on his first job, he got a really nice salary. He's a graduated engineer, mechanical engineer, and he's sitting down going over the stuff with me. And I said, he has an option in his 401k to have salary deduction, to have it go straight into the Roth. He doesn't get a tax deduction for that. In other words, he's putting after tax money in there that's going to make his paycheck a little smaller. But I still recommend that he did it because the earnings that he's going to enjoy over like a 40 year career are going to far outweigh that money that he's putting in there now. And that's all going to be ultimately tax free for him. So the part of the Roth IRA, which is tax free, is the accumulation, which after 30 or 40 years of accumulation, many times that far outweighs the contributions that were put in there. OK, so it started by William Roth, or he was the sponsor of the bill. So it got named after him, it's funded with after tax dollars. And another real advantage to this is that when you've been accumulating money in a traditional IRA or a traditional 401k, which is where most money is, when you get to be 72, you have to take a certain amount of that out every year. It's a little bit of a complicated formula. We can help you with that. Um, and that amount that you have to take each out each year grows over time. So what the government's saying to you with required minimum distributions or RMDs is you've enjoyed this tax deferral all these years. Now the party's over. You got to start taking some money out of here. You're retired. With the Roth, if you fund it with after tax dollars or you pay the taxes during a conversion, you, you're not going to face RMDs so that many people that put money in a Roth end up leaving it there or leaving some of it there for the rest of their lives. And that goes on to their heirs and their heirs inherit it without a tax bill attached, which is pretty sweet. So you got no required minimum distributions on the Roth. Now for contributions, because many of you are eligible each year, even though you have a retirement plan at work or you got a 401k, you're eligible to put, if you're 50 and over, seven grand a year for each of you if you're married or 14 grand um, into a Roth account. So, you know, you start adding that up. I have many people that come into me and they start doing, they're coming in maybe five years before retirement. And then what we're going to do is plan out the next five years. And this is included that we can go ahead and make a contribution. Some of the people come in have already been doing that for a few years. And so the income limits on that are 144,000 for a single, 214,000 for a couple. So if you're over that, you can't do this. I've got another way. You can talk to me about a backdoor Roth IRA. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, we actually do have a way to do that. But for people that are under that, it's pretty easy. You can just open one and you're putting after tax dollars in there. Now they get Roths have this thing called the five year rule. And what it means is that when you open a Roth IRA, when you open your first one, you can't take any money out of there tax free until five years have passed. That's an oversimplification of the rules, a little bit complicated. But so for that, I'd recommend if you don't have a Roth of any kind now that you would 
open one, even if you put a hundred bucks in there or 500 bucks, because you'd start the top clock ticking on the five-year rule. So that's something we could cover individually. Um, it's something to think about. Now, another advantage to the Roth IRA is the distributions from a Roth and distributions in retirement accounts is translated as income you live off of. Many people just don't have the luxury of waiting until required minimum distribution time or 72 to start pulling money out of there. People have to live off of it. Okay. And so when you're living off of regular 401k money or regular traditional IRA money, that creates a tax bill. It also creates income that is used to extra tax Medicare under IRMA, and it causes your Social Security to be taxed. With, an, with a Roth, the income or the distributions are tax-free, so they don't run up a bill for IRMA or for Social Security. So if we can catch somebody, you know, in your early 60s, mid 60s, and we can plan for a while through Roth conversions so that you'll you'll be under the thresholds for these kind of things. Earnings accumulate tax free. I mean, I've already gone over that, but it's just when you start looking at that, when I look at an account where somebody has, let's say they have a million dollars in their 401k. And when we really dig into that account, you know, there's 300, 400,000 that they actually contributed or their employer contributed. The other five or 600,000 is earnings. They haven't paid any tax on any of it. And now they have, you know, what Ed Slot refers to as a, as a tax bomb because somebody's gonna have to pay tax on that thing. And if they're just in their 60s, that thing's gonna inflate even more. And if the plan here is to leave it to your kids, uh, that's not necessarily a very good estate plan because you're handing your kids a tax bill and in order to get any money out of the thing, the kids are gonna have to cash it in and pay the taxes all at once. Now, with a Roth, beneficiaries have 10 years to distribute the money to themselves. So, you know, like if, 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 if a beneficiary inherited 200,000 worth of Roth IRA, maybe they want some of that money now, but they can leave the balance. Let's say they wanted 50,000 now. Well, that, first of all, that's tax-free, which is pretty sweet. Doesn't show up on their tax return. And then 150 of it, they could leave in the Roth and then it accumulates even further tax free. And they could wait till the end of the 10th year and then they have to pull it all out. But they still don't have to pay any taxes at the end of the 10th year or they can space it out or create an income. So it's, it's not only tax free during your life, the accumulation and earnings and the principal then it's tax-free for another 10 years for money left on deposit for your heirs. Pretty sweet. Now, a lot of what we do in financial planning is people say, man, I want in. Okay, well, then we need a conversion plan. And, you know, a conversion just means I have X amount in traditional, a big balance, and now I'm going to convert a portion of that over to the Roth. I mean, we had one guy that just didn't want to play that way. He just said, I want to convert the whole thing. And I said, you know, that's, that's going to create a big tax bill. I don't care. I want to do it. Could, could you at least spread it? Because this was in December last year. Could you at least do half this year and half in January? No, he didn't want to do any of that. And he ended up paying us the planning fee just to tell him what the taxes are. So we did. We calculated all of it and sent it to him. And he converted the whole thing but it created a huge tax bill. So I think it's more prudent to do it over a series of years, okay, and to have a plan. And what a lot of people use is for a couple, the top of the 24% tax bracket is 340,000 of adjusted gross income. The top for a single is 170,000. So a lot of people when they're looking at a Roth conversion saying they say, I can stand paying the taxes now at a rate of 24%. So if this couple had 150,000 
of income otherwise that they're paying taxes on, if we converted 190 of Roth in this year, they would, um, they're gonna have to pay tax on that 190. And, but, but they would, that would be the most federal tax rate that they'd pay. And of course you'd have to add the state income tax. We get a lot of people doing these in Texas and Florida where they enjoy no taxes, but we gotta factor that in too. It still, for many people, makes sense to develop a strategy. That's what we do as part of a retirement plan. So we can later draw from that account tax-free. Now, another question on a conversion that we need to ask, are you going to pay the tax out of the converted money? If you're going to do that, you need to be over 59 and a half. The next thing, or are you, you, know, are you going to pay it out of the converted money, or are you going to pay this out of other money that you have sitting on the sidelines? And if you don't have that money, then obviously it's going to come out of the conversion amount. And we can make it work either way, but ideally you pay these federal taxes out of money sitting on the sidelines, and then you get to convert the whole amount. It ends up in the account. Um, now, the conversion spread over a number of years. Uh, Roth 401k new contributions. We have a lot of folks come into us at 60, 61, 62, 58, and they've got a few more years of work and then they're going to retire. Um, and then they want to figure out how they're going to live after that. And that's what we're doing in the retirement plan. Well, if their 401k allows Roth contributions as opposed to the regular traditional contributions. My suggestion is they go make that change. And I'm suggesting that to you to consider it. You know, if you want to call me up and look at the whole situation, I'll be glad to talk with you. But it is to think about just changing your contribution. And that's going to lower your paycheck because it's it's not your contributions then are not tax deferred or tax deductible. They're after tax. So it'll have an effect on the amount of your paycheck, but you'll start accumulating Roth money right away inside of your 401k if your 401k allows it. So I can help you figure all that out if you if you need help. Now, then we get down to, I have a lot of people ask questions about what money do I put in, in the Roth and what money do I leave in the traditional? Or in other words, if I've got several mutual funds or several different stocks, you know, which one's in the Roth, which one's left in the traditional. And my general answer to that, and I could give you a specific answer if I'm handling the money or giving the advice on it, is you put the riskier stuff that's in growth stocks in the Roth because presumably that's going to grow substantially and that growth will be tax free, not just tax deferred. And you're going to leave the more conservative stuff over still inside the traditional. It's providing you safety and balance of risk. But over time, it's presumably going to earn less because you're sooner or later, somebody's going to have to pay taxes on that money. So I hope this was very helpful. I'm Hans Scheil and thank you for listening.